Today, a major decision that will affect the care of thousands of young people questioning their gender identity. The High Court ruled that children under 16 are unlikely to be able to give informed consent to undergo treatment with puberty-blocking drugs. The case was brought by Kira Bell, who'd been prescribed the drugs aged 16, against London's Tavistock and Portman Trust. Over the past 18 months, Newsnight has reported on a series of concerns raised about the Trust's use of puberty blockers. We've also reported on the challenges some clinicians said they had in raising questions about the care some young people received at the Trust's Gender Identity Development Service, England's only NHS service for young people questioning their gender identity. At the heart of today's ruling is the role puberty blockers play in a young person's treatment. The court found... There is real uncertainty over the short and long-term consequences of the treatment, with very limited evidence as to its efficacy. This means it is, in our view, properly described as experimental treatment. But what is the purpose of the drugs? The Tavistock and others have long argued that puberty blockers allow a young person time to think about their gender identity without the added distress of going through puberty. But the judges questioned whether it was that straightforward. The court also went further, rejecting the Tavistock Trust's argument that the decision to take puberty blockers was entirely separate from the next stage of transitioning, the use of cross-sex hormones, testosterone for girls, or oestrogen for boys. The court said... The evidence that we have on this issue clearly shows that practically all children and young people who start puberty blockers progress on to cross-sex hormones. So what does all this mean for informed consent? The available evidence suggests that starting puberty blockers would likely mean a young person would then go on to take cross-sex hormones. Would a child under the age of 16 fully understand the implications of this on their bodies in the long term. In effect, the court said no. It said it was doubtful informed consent was possible for under 16s and even for those who are 16 or 17, it would be appropriate to involve the court where there is any doubt treatment was in their long term best interests. There is no age appropriate way to explain to many of these children what losing their fertility or full sexual function may mean to them in later years. In this ruling, there are no winners. As of today, there will be no new referrals for puberty blockers for under-16s from the Gender Identity Development Service. And tonight, Newsnight has learned that JIDS will have to review all current cases of children under 16 who are on blockers and get a court order if they wish to continue treatment. But for the thousands of children waiting to be seen by the clinic, it's unclear what help there will be for them. Deb Cohen with that report. Well, we asked the Tavistock Trust to join us tonight. Nobody there was available. In a statement, they said the Trust is disappointed by today's judgment and we understand the outcome is likely to cause anxiety for patients and their families. Our first duty is to our patients, particularly those currently receiving hormone blocking treatment. And we're working with our partners to provide support for patients concerned about the impact on their care. It added the Trust seeking permission to appeal the judgment will not be making new referrals to endocrinology until we have more clarity. Joining me now is one of the claimants in that case, Kira Bell, um, who won the case today. Kira, for those who don't know you, just outline your own story for us briefly. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was referred to the clinic at age uh, 15 and I was seen from age 16 uh, and I was put on puberty blockers that same year um, and onto testosterone the next year um, and then I went on to surgery through the adult clinic. Just explain to us, you suffered gender dysphoria as a, as a girl yes. and you felt that you, you wanted to transition to become a, a, boy, a man. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Um, so, yeah, when I, when I first arrived at the, at the clinic, you know, my belief, you know, that I was a boy or, you know, that I should become a boy was affirmed. Um, you know, there was no investigation into why I had those feelings. You know, it was, it was pretty much accepted from the get-go. And, you know, um, yeah, medical interventions were um, spoken of quite quickly. So you went ahead, you had, you had the blockers, you had surgery, mm. and then you decided that that wasn't the right course for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, just realising, I think, that a lot of it isn't based in, uh, you know, it doesn't have scientific 
um, evidence behind it, um, you know, and, and just realizing that, um, you know, it's not a healthy route to go if, you know, I can, uh, you know, if I don't need to continue on with it. So, I mean, it's, it's incredibly personal. It's very sort of you yeah. specific. But in your case, you felt that what they, they had let you have access to the drugs too quickly. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. And that you should have been denied that because you, you weren't making a sound judgment. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I was dealing with a lot of other mental health issues also. Um, and, you know, a lot of um, past issues that hadn't been brought up or, again, it wasn't investigated. So, um, yeah, there, there's always a lot of issues going on behind the scenes, uh, you know, definitely in my experience. And I think, um, you know, with the current kind of, um, you know, trend that we're seeing of, of young girls uh, being referred to the clinic. I guess th this judgment would stop them handing out the, the treatment mm -hmm. straight away or after a, a short amount of counselling. But if you, you know, as an articulate young woman went to the court and said, I really mean this and I'm serious about it, mm -hmm. there's every chance that the court would still have allowed you to do something which you would later regret, isn't there? Um, I, I wouldn't say so um, because, you know, they, they would have actually looked into uh, the reasons, you know, why I, I wanted to uh, proceed with the treatment. And, you know, I'm sure that the mental health issues and everything that should have been discovered at the Tavistock would have been brought out in the courts. There will be thousands of young people tonight who will be terrified by this judgment, as you know, terrified that this will stop them living the life that they need to, be incredibly distressed because something that didn't work for you may still work and be very important to them. Yeah, I mean, I think when we're dealing with the topic of mental health, you know, obviously emotions will be running high and I understand that, you know, um, I would have been in the same position perhaps as, you know, you know, someone, uh, you know, age 16, for example, um, you know, listening to, you know, what happened today. Um, but, you know, again, the High Court, you know, they, they came to their decision, you know, they're, they're high-tier judges and, you know, they looked so at the... you don't worry about the kids now who, I mean, some of them might even have their current drug treatment yeah. stopped. Do you, do you worry oh, I'm, about I'm, them? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm definitely concerned about them and I completely empathise with them. Um, you know, I think that better mental health services um, need to be put in place uh, to help that, that person through, the, you know, the period that they're going through. Um, you know, I think that's, that's the vital, you know, that's what needs to happen. Because for every Kira Bell, there could be somebody who isn't allowed and wants to be allowed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, again, the High Court, you know, they um, came to the conclusion that it isn't possible for, you know, particularly under 16s to uh, consent to that treatment, mm. uh, you know, and those protections are put in place for a reason. Carabelle, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much for coming in. Let's speak now to Susie Green, the CEO of Mermaids, a charity which supports transgender children and teenagers and their parents. Um, Susie Green, NHS England have said tonight that they welcome the clarity that this judgment brings and they have amended their service specifications, even including those who are actually on blockers, um, and they'll be reviewed starting immediately. Y your response? I think it's a disaster, quite frankly. I think this is um, ushering a new era of discrimination against trans people. Nobody else has got this kind of measures in terms of young people and their autonomy over their own bodies. It is only young people who are trans who are being subjected to this. And um, I can't go into individual instances because obviously that would violate people's privacy, but we've seen today the devastating impact that this judgment is already having and will continue to have over the next few months and years to come. Our helpline and our forums have been swamped by families and young people who are personally impacted and the inevitable rise in self-harm and suicid suicidality we are what? seeing is worrying. Let, let's deal, if you don't mind, let's deal with those separately. This is not, okay. as you'll know, it's not denial. All it does is put it back to the courts to make the final decision. So they're not saying no one can have this treatment. They're just saying we need to get this right. We need an extra level of checking so we don't end up with the kind of regret that you just heard a moment ago from Kira. Yeah, but you've got to appreciate that, that Kira's experience, although obviously valid, is not representative of the vast majority of people who go through this process. There's less than a 1% regret 
after transition. Are we saying that it's so much better not to be trans that will sacrifice the happiness of those 99 trans young people who need this treatment? I guess what we're saying is that the court weighed up thousands of pages of evidence. They took those views into account. They heard from young people, three GIDS patients, who were submitted by the Tavistock. They've done their homework on this and they think more protection and more guidance for young people is used with these highly unusual, innovative drugs that they know very little about. These have been used for over three decades. This is not experimental well, treatment. Not, not, not in this specific way to start the transitioning process, which, as you know, yes, it does. No, they have. The Dutch, the Dutch instigated this kind of treatment in the 1980s, late 1980s. This has been used routinely to treat gender dysphoria and to halt puberty for, for many, many years. This is not experimental, and there are so many studies out there that show how efficient this is, how much it helps young people, how much it um, helps them to live their lives. This is literally life-saving treatment well, that is now denied. I, well, I'm not sure that you can say it's life-saving because we know that any suicide is way too many, but there is no strong evidence to support that this is either life-saving or that this increases the risk of suicide. GID's own website says, thankfully, suicide is extremely rare. So to say it is life-saving is dangerous. It's different territory. I don't think so. Not when this is anecdotal. This is what parents are saying to us. This is what families and young people are saying to us, that this is literally something that they desperately needed, that their children desperately needed, that this is something that literally saved their lives. So this is anecdotally from parents. I've been working in this field for like over 21 years because, um, and, and I've see, seen literally thousands of families, and I have seen the difference, the positive difference that access to puberty blockers gives to young people that allows them to get on and live their lives without the torture that is puberty. And, Having to and we know out there is horrendous. Well, and this now is is basically going to force potentially thousands of young people to experience that. It well, is a I think it's different. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't for a moment contradict your own experience or what you've heard from young people, because as we said a moment ago, this is intensely personal and every single person is different. But what the judges have said is that the evidence base for the treatment is highly uncertain. It's an experimental treatment. And even when I was speaking to the Tavistock a year ago, Elizabeth Van Horn says the evidence is not gold standard. They do not have the evidence to try and draw conclusions about the benefits of this. And surely an extra layer of protection can only be a good thing. Is there any other treatment pathway, whether it is new or established or, or well-versed, that has ever had to go through a court for a young person to be able to access? I don't think so. And I think whether it is deemed as being experimental or not, whether they're going to ignore the breadth of international evidence that shows how good this treatment works for young people and the positive outcomes, even if they ignore all of that, even if they ignore all of that, okay. are they going to listen to young people. Susie Green, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.